Recently, there was a security research paper published showing a proof of concept of how certain regular computer mice could be used by malware to act as a microphone, literally converting the mouse's raw input data into audio data to spy on you. And the craziest part is the hacker does not have to have physical access to your computer or mouse, nor does it have to have admin privileges. The malware could just be running at user space level. However, it does require certain conditions and certain specs and capabilities of your mouse, but nothing crazy. Like even my Logitech G502X would be vulnerable. But does that mean you should actually worry about this as a practical thing? Well, probably not for several reasons, but let's get into it. The authors called this technique Mike E. Mouse. So it's like Mickey Mouse, it's a clever pun and in the paper they go into great detail about how all this works. I'll put the link in the description if you want to read more about it. I'm just going to cover more of the basics. And as for how the technique actually works, I believe it basically just records all the raw data from the mouse as it comes into the computer and then they use techniques to kind of detect, okay, this is the amount of movement for this given time frame. And I guess you can sort of just calculate the amount of movement and then translate that into a audio waveform. And obviously it's gonna have a lot of noise in there, but when you speak and it vibrates the surface more, well, that's gonna have bigger movements, which might show up as a bigger change on the waveform. And then you could sort of adapt that into audio. And I don't think this is necessarily new. I mean, I've even seen talk of how you can use lasers pointed at windows to detect speech inside a room, stuff like that. Once they converted the raw data into audio data, they then used different types of filters like traditional filters, as well as AI models. And they found that the AI models actually significantly improve it to denoise it and get results out of it. And I could put a link to their proof of concept video in the description. But that does mean that potentially in the future, better AI models might be able to be developed that could decipher speech even from mice that are below the current threshold that they described that are currently required. But probably the main thing you're wondering is what actual requirements does the mouse have to have for it to be vulnerable? And it really depends on two things, the mouse DPI, the maximum dots per inch or sensitivity of the mouse, as well as the polling rate, how frequently the mouse can pull for changes. And those are actually for two different reasons. The DPI is able to make it so it can detect smaller vibrations in the material on the surface, which means it can detect more sensitive or quieter sounds. And they say that generally the mouse probably has to have about 20,000 DPI minimum or up, and that makes that half of it vulnerable. And then for the other half, it depends on the polling rate. Now, this is more of a matter of the higher, the better. And in their testing, at least for this technique, they found that 8,000 Hertz mice for the polling rate were able to accurately or intelligibly record 91% of phonemes. So phonemes are basically word sounds, parts of a word sort of. For mice that are capable of 4,000 Hertz, that drops to around 80%. And even for mice that are just 1,000 Hertz, it is down to 42%. But I guess even being able to detect even that much, 40%, depending on what it is, could still be enough. However, here's the biggest limitation of this technique, at least at this point in time, it could be refined later, and that is that the surface of the mouse really affects how much information can be intelligibly recorded. They say it works best on thin and flexible materials and not thick and rigid. So in other words, if it's a heavy wooden desk or something, which is not really gonna be moved very easily by just sound or granite, stuff like that is not gonna be able to record. And for some specific tests they did on a thin plastic surface, they found that around 61% of the speech was intelligible with that. The performance dropped significantly on a paper surface that was around 55% and then it was even worse on cardboard at like 23%. Now, importantly, they didn't show any tests or at least any results on cloth mouse pads, which I think is gonna be the most common thing people would use. And I have to assume that that's because the technique doesn't work at all on those. It would just be 0%. And in the section where they describe possible countermeasures, they specifically mention a mouse pad as an option saying signal absorbing mouse pad reduces vibration based eavesdropping with minimal user disruption. At first I thought maybe they meant a specially designed signal absorbing mouse pad, but I think they're just talking about mouse pads in general being signal absorbing. So that's one of the reasons why this isn't really probably concerning for most people, but I'll get into some other reasons later. Now, before I talk about how worried you should actually be about this, something you shouldn't have to be worried about is malware in general, which is where today's sponsor comes in, Bitdefender. And they're all in one security platform, Bitdefender Premium Security. 
It's more than just some antivirus program, but a complete security suite, including advanced threat defense, which can protect against brand new malware by analyzing its behavior, not just relying on signatures, though of course it can detect them that way too. And with exploit detection, it can also detect malware that exploits a vulnerability in an otherwise legitimate application, like a zero day exploit that the app hasn't patched yet, or an app that is very old and was never patched. Bitdefender can detect more than just malicious apps though. It also detects malicious scripts, command line commands, process memory, key loggers, and more. And with features like network threat prevention, it can stop network attacks before they begin by blocking malicious attempts on system vulnerabilities and brute force attacks. With Bitdefender Premium Security, you even get protection for your mobile devices, where it can detect malicious links even when they appear in SMS messages, chat apps, calendar invites, or mobile app URLs. It also has online scam protection through their Scam Copilot AI platform, including features like scam ad detection to block fake and malicious ads, blocking scam websites, and detecting new scam patterns. And right now, you can get a special 90-day extended free trial to Bitdefender Premium Security through the link in the description. So be sure to check out the link down there. And with all that being said, let's continue. Now, should you really be concerned about this being a realistic attack? Definitely not as a regular user, I would say. And that's because there are much lower hanging fruit if a hacker wants to gain data from you with malware. I mean, they're gonna be way more interested in the actual data on your computer, or at the very worst, stuff you're typing into the computer. They're probably not gonna be very concerned with your spoken conversations while you're using the computer. And even if they were, it would probably be easier and simpler for them to access your literal microphones connected to your computer if they even care. Now, most operating systems do usually tell you when a microphone is in use, but I guess if they have malware, it's conceivable, especially if they have admin privileges, that they could just hide that feature somehow, but still. I guess the only exception to this could be if you're someone who's super high value, like a spy, and you're actually being targeted by nation state hackers specifically going after you. I don't know, maybe in that case, they might craft a special malware just for you and try to get it to you. But again, that could be pretty easily mitigated by just using a mouse pad or a non-gaming mouse. So it's not something you probably have to worry about. And if you are worrying about that, you probably already know about ways to deal with that. For the proof of concept example app, they have it on GitHub. I didn't test it or anything, it requires Linux, but obviously the general technique could be adapted for any operating system. And they also talk about how the proof of concept could be adapted to sort of inject into legitimate applications, specifically games. And that's because games, online games especially, do send out continuous network traffic. So that could be a way to kind of sneak in the malicious audio that it captured to be processed elsewhere. However, they do mention elsewhere in the paper that you kind of have to have the mouse stationary for it to properly, or at least in the best case, detect the speech. And I would think if you're playing a video game, then you're gonna be constantly moving the mouse, or at least you're always gonna have your hand on the mouse. So I don't know if that really would be that realistic. Another thing I'll point out is when they did do their testing, they specifically set the DPI and polling rate of the mouse to the highest it can go. So I think if you usually set your mouse to a lower polling rate or don't use its full DPI, like in Logitech settings, you can change that, it probably wouldn't work. Though at the same time, it is conceivable that the malware would just change the mouse setting. Now, as a side note, the reason why the higher polling rate kilohertz is better is actually pretty interesting. You see, with any kind of microphone, whether it's a mouse that you're kind of jerry-rigging as a microphone or a true microphone, typically you want to record the audio using a sample rate that is at least twice of the max frequency that you wanna be able to capture of the actual audio going on. And this is called the Nyquist theorem. For example, have you ever wondered why audio files and like audio settings in Windows almost always show a default of around 44 kilohertz? Well, that's not an accident. That's because the human hearing range tops out at around 22 kilohertz. And you might also notice if you ever go to buy a microphone, you might notice that it has a response range that goes up to that same range, about up to 22 kilohertz. Because again, it kind of makes sense that we would only really need to capture audio that goes up to what we can hear when played back anyway. However, the response range of the microphone and the sample rate are different. The sample rate is literally like how often the computer checks the volume level of what the microphone is putting out. And that is what you need to capture at twice the max frequency. So for example, when I made my video talking about my 100 kilohertz microphone, well, you have to be sure to capture then the audio at over 200 kilohertz sample rate. Anyway, bringing it back to the topic of this video, most human speech 
exists below around 2000 hertz, two kilohertz. However, that's not the whole story because certain letter sounds that we speak are actually higher frequency. And on top of that, they may also not be as loud relatively as other letter sounds we speak. So when you combine that, where it might be a higher frequency where you'd need a higher mouse polling rate to detect, as well as not as loud to vibrate the surface, where you would need a higher DPI to detect. So that's why the specs of the mouse matter. And that's also why an eight kilohertz mouse actually works even better. And they say that some, a few of the phonemes actually require even higher than eight kilohertz. Though that's only a small amount, less than 10%. Though I will point out these percentages they show, I believe are the theoretical phoneme detection rates. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you'd actually be able to intelligibly record 90 or 80% of the speech. They would also be affected by the surface a lot. So overall, a pretty interesting paper, though I think you probably don't have to really worry about it realistically at this point in time. Who knows, with AI, it might be able to get really better in the future, but it's certainly not gonna be keeping me up. Thanks again to Bitdefender for sponsoring, and be sure to check out the 90-day extended free trial for Bitdefender Premium Security through the link in the description. Now, if you wanna keep watching, next up here's my video where I did talk about a 100 kilohertz microphone where I recorded some stuff that usually only pets and animals can hear. So I think that's pretty interesting. I'll put that link right there you can click on. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big giant thumbs up, it helps out. And if you wanna subscribe, I try to make videos about twice a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.